This is such a difficult thing to talk about and to, to, to face the, the reality of, of why we're here. It's, it's a sad, uh, sad day, a sad reason for us to be meeting. And I hope that we never ever have to meet like this again. So yes, I'm a trans person and trans people um, do have a rough go with things in life. It is not an easy road to go. And people don't get it. People don't understand. And people do, especially if you look different. You know, someone like me, I don't look so different. So I don't experience a whole lot of problems related to being trans. The more different you look, the more problems you experience. And those are the most vulnerable people among us. There are very few people who are more vulnerable than trans people. Um, the suicide rate of trans people, as they say, is high in the world. Very, very high. I go around, I talk to schools, I do education around sexual and gender diversity, and there's just very few populations that we know of that have uh, such high rates of suicides, such high rates of depression, rejection, discrimination. So this is a community that we need to protect. As an entire community, we have to protect this community of people among us. And Leela wasn't part of our community. I didn't know her. I don't know if anybody here actually knew her personally. But obviously, we've all been affected by her suicide. And it's just such a loss. It's such a tragedy. And coming to speak here about this tonight, um, you know, I, I, I feel very, very conflicted. Because the suicide, the suicide is conflict. It comes with conflict. And there's the loss and the tragedy and the grief. And then with the grief is the anger, too. You can't just have a pure grief. There's also the anger because it, then the people who are left behind are left to pick up the pieces, left to go on, left with a little more despair, which we don't need. We don't need more despair. And uh, I have my mother, um, when I, I gave a talk in town um, last summer on suicide, it's on my website, calvinutel.com. Um, and I think there's some good stuff in there, so if you're interested, I put the text of the talk on, on my website. And my mother told a story about, you know, thinking about suicide and the reality of suicide. So it's like if somebody's going to drive themselves off of a cliff. And she said, if, if you picture yourself driving off of that cliff, and then all of a sudden if your family was standing in the way, would you just plow right through them on your way off of the cliff, or would you stop? Right? Because that's the reality of what suicide does, is that you transfer all of your people, you are running off of all of the people in your life, all of your family, and you transfer your pain and your wounds to the people that you love. So, Leela was just such a beautiful person. Just beautiful. I, I, I know her just by the pictures, right? And a little bit of stories if you get snippets, snippets here and there. But what a beautiful person. Just gorgeous, gorgeous. And then with that is the conflict again of this beautiful person and how much more beautiful she'll never become. And there's her message, the final message, fix society. A good message, a strong message. And that message is mixed with her final message, which is given up. So that, we think that the last message we send maybe is what we write in our note and send to the world. That's our last message. But the suicide is the last message. The giving up is the last message. And that's the message that people remember. So I feel very conflicted around suicide, generally. The, a funeral is a celebration of a, I, I, I've been to many funerals. And most of the time, where there's a natural death, some kind of funeral is a celebration of a person's life. And Leela deserves no less. No less. She's beautiful, and we must celebrate her. We must celebrate also all of the unknowns. She was one of the, I won't use the word lucky few, but one of the very few that actually becomes known, spreads, and is becomes an agent of change, like this group is, is doing with this story. That's the few. The majority are forgotten. The majority are unknown. So it's important to remember, it's important to honor, and it's important to do something good, to make something good out of this that has happened. In my talk on suicide, I, I say that out of suicide, nothing good grows. And I do believe that. But then again, there's that conflict, because we can still do something. But we 
Leela did was she transferred her pain to her wounds. For the rest of us now to carry, and for the rest of us now to try to do something good out of this, to try to fix society. And so as I'm thinking about what it takes to fix society, I don't think we can. I think it's impossible. But let me pause that thought, and I'll come back to that. Um, that in addition to the conflict, in addition to the honoring of her, um, there is also a fear, I'm afraid, of what can come out of this. Out of su suicide can be very contagious. So when somebody commits suicide, I am afraid. And um, I was just talking to my mother on the phone this morning, actually talking about this talk, and she said that, um, she mentioned that, this, well, this is nothing new. This, the contagion of suicide is nothing new. She went back to Goethe, Goethe, famous, one of the most famous literary figures in uh, all of history, Goethe. And his, one of his earliest, if not his earliest books, was called The Sorrows of Young Werther. And it was a story of a man who fell in love, and the love just wouldn't, couldn't happen, and he committed suicide. And he published the book, and instantly gained international with that came the spread of the of young lovers. And he regretted that book for the rest of his life. He, he wished it out and done. He didn't do it. And so it's not even this. is in the 1700s. You publish a book about a suicide, and then there's these suicides. Similar method. And in fact, I was reading about it then this morning, and reading about what they call um, copycat suicide. I don't like that term. I think that that diminishes. But that phenomenon of suicide that follow the suicide is actually known as the Werther effect based on that book. On that book is known as the Werther effect. And they say that the, when there's a highly publicized suicide, that the people who are most similar to the person in circumstances who committed suicide that's being publicized, that those people, that age, that demographic, are at a higher risk of death by suicide. And when I think of the young trans people, how, how much more vulnerable can you get than to have something like this that puts you at an even greater risk of suicide? I'm afraid. So I want to speak very frankly about this. Because I don't want the message to go up that people feel that they are so insignificant, that the only way to be noticed is to commit suicide, or that the only way to be seen for your pain to be seen, for you to be seen is to commit suicide, or that you feel so empowered that the only way you can make change happen is to do that. This Leela story is making change happen, and that's good. And the conflict with that is that that doesn't mean that if you do it too, that your death will make the change. Nothing, out of suicide, nothing good grows. So we need to stick around, and the change has to happen by sticking around to do it. I grieve for her. I grieve for her mother, regardless of the circumstances that led to her suicide. It's lost and it's tragic. And then her final message, making life, uh, fixing society. What does it take to fix society? I don't think that we can. I think that that's too tall an order for any person. But the only thing that any of us can do is to fix ourselves. Now, what does that take? I say in my talks over and over and over again, what does it take to make life better? It takes truth, it takes love, and it takes happiness. So truth, that means truth even when nobody believes you. When they mock the truth about you. Stick to it. Don't give up. Love, even when you feel unloved or unlovable. Love. You know, stick to that. If you want life to be better. And happiness. I say in my talks that you make happiness a priority. Fight for it. Defend it. Preserve it. Because your happy self is your best self. Making happiness your priority is not a selfish self. It's the most altruistic thing you can do. It makes life better. Giving your happy self to people is the best gift you can give to anybody. You have to make happiness a priority. Because without it, we don't want to be alive. I can't think of anything more important. So 
we have to make truth, love, and happiness the most important things in our lives. That's the key to making life better. That's the key to being well. That's the key to fixing ourselves. And that's the key to fixing ourselves.